Oh wow. Did everyone hear that? Yeah. yeah. Who didn't hear it? Uh, that's a really good question. Thanks. Uh, I just, I, like musically, I'm, there's so many amazing people. I've just watched, uh, Kate Bush is doing gigs in London at the moment, and I have not been able to see them because the tickets sold out in about 90 seconds. Um, but I just, I think she's amazing. Uh, so, Kate Bush. Uh, Tom York um, is brilliant. Justice Bieber. <laughs> yeah. You'd yeah. be great to collaborate with Justice Bieber because you could just make him, you know, make him brain like a donkey. Or something. <laughs> like experimental. He's just really stretching your. <sighs> that's, that's, that's the dream, isn't it? Um, Arcade Fire. They're playing tonight. It's fun. Uh, uh, other people. Can you think of any um, lesser known artists or indie artists that you want to give a little shout out to that you're a fan of? Yeah, there are. Um, yeah, you guys probably know most of them. I. Five Dangerfield. Oh, yeah, five. That's good. There's a guy. You should, you should, thanks. Thanks for answering my question. <laughs> Get put on the spot. You can, I'm an employee, it used to be my own employee. Um, yeah, this guy called Five Gage Field was brilliant, who uh, I used to play guitar for. Uh, and he's in a band who don't even play anymore called Gillamots. So look at them, they're brilliant. Um, there's a guy called Baxter Jury in London who's great, and he, um, uh, he's in Jury Sun from Enjoy the Pockets, and he's really good. Uh, and there's a band called Cold Specs. Oh, great as well. But those, have you written these down? <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll go back to the crowd for more questions. Saw lots of hands. There's one in a black shirt next to the lady in stripes, and I'll go to the lady in stripes next. Okay, um, the question is of all the uh, drop people episodes that you were part of, is there one that you would have liked to be part of, uh, that you would have loved to play in, and why? Great question. I really like the Van Gogh episode. Yeah. And this, they were filming while we were, you know, we were filming at the same time. Um, and uh, Tony Curran was brilliant. Um, I just would have liked to work with him because he's, because he's great. It's off the top of my head, that one, but there will probably be tomorrow. Um, yeah. I'd love to work with Capaldi at some point. Maybe in the future. But not on Doctor Who because I'm dead or I'm over it. Never the Musketeers! Answer. Oh, the Musketeers, yeah. Actually, have you guys seen that? Oh, that's good. I like that show. Anyway, this is. Yeah. Uh, so there's Lady in Stripes. It was the same question, how about that? Alright, and right down with the red hair. Are you naked? <laughs> oh, God, I'm gone. I thought you were living one of those horrible dreams. And suddenly you go, oh, yeah, it's a uh, hello, I asked the question. Uh, I look at it, and I'm naked. Thanks. Come on. Thanks, Nathan Brown. Um, huh? I'm the drunk giraffe. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. So good. Um, <laughs> this is Nathan Brown. Um, the, uh, what was the question? Which was your favorite, oh, favorite death? Favorite death. Um, I liked the being zapped by an old lady um, oh, yeah. and turned into sand, <laughs> which has always been a dream of mine. <laughs> and yeah, because there was something, a lot, I, there was a lot of decisions in my uh, 
time in Doctor Who that I made because I was a big Back to the Future fan. And like the uh, gilets. Do you guys have gilets here? Do you know what a gilet is? Puffy vest. A puff, puffy vest. Puffy vest is a different thing. The, the, the thing, the, the body warmer, the light preserver. Um, that was because I uh, was a big Martin McFly fan. Uh, as, and also the disappointing to Sam felt like the bit where his hand disappears when he's on stage, and I just really liked that. So, so, yeah. Let's go right to that doctor right there with glasses. If anyone did uh, hear that, just the difference between performing on stage and something like once versus performing on screen in Doctor Who. They both have their um, difficulties and challenges and an uh, equal amount of work, I think, for each one. Being on stage is different, depending on how long I'm doing it for. I've just done a show called Once, which was great, and I did it in New York for a while, and then in London, and um, all in all, I did it for like t 10 months, which is, I was terrified. I was meant to do it in New York for a year, and I couldn't. The idea of doing it that many times was, I thought I'd just go mad by repeating the same thing every go over again. But there's something about, about that repetition which makes you make different decisions each time, and you're much, I find being on stage is much less nerve wracking than doing TV stuff, because it feels like, Especially after a while, you kind of you, you, you've done it so many times that you can really play with you can really play with what you're doing and, and make decisions in the moment. Whereas for TV stuff, for me anyway, and I, you know, I still feel very much at the beginning of my career that you you know you have to do a lot of work beforehand to get to that point on the day. And you only get all, like, you only really get a few chances to get it right, and also you have to you have that pressure of doing making the definitive version of something. But doing something like Doctor Who is great because you get to know the character so well, so your decisions come much quicker and you, you get to, you know, when you're working with people uh, like Matt and Karen and Alex and, you know, and everyone else who's involved in it, and you, you forge working relationships with them and you understand how each other tick. Um, and it really helped having been on stage with Matt before. We did a play together before we did Doctor Who together. So we'd already worked together and knew kind of bits of how each other yeah, did stuff, so it was, that made that more enjoyable uh, and, and just easier. But then, you know, there's some days in the theatre, you, you know, when you go, I, I don't know if I've said this already today, and you, you know, you do get slightly mad. So there's that. We'll go back down here to the feds. Uh, just kind of curious what your most memorable behind the scenes on any episode of Doctor Who has like, uh, whether it be with Mad or Karen or the trio in general. A memorable behind-the-scenes moment while working on Doctor Who. Wow. Um, what secrets can I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> there were, we had so much fun because we travelled so much together. Like going to Croatia to do uh, Vampires and Venice was great. That was really fun. Um, and to be staying in this little town, and then all of us going to Utah um, and hanging out and going to strange bars <laughs> called the Shotgun Saloon, where we all thought we were going to die. <laughs> um, yeah, we were loads of fun, but so much of the time, I mean, we felt quite, well, I think me and Matt will probably touch on this tomorrow, but um, so much of the time was because we were doing it for so long. And no matter who you spend time with, you will have loved ones or people you live with. You know, you, you can choose to go, oh, no, I've had enough of you for a bit, but we need to go to our own thing for a bit. You know? Whereas we were forced together in this kind of environment for, for a very long time. So we, we built up this, this way of talking to each other, which kind of involved not really saying anything, but just being quite loud. And I think it, I think it was kind of annoying for a lot of people <laughs> who we were around. But there was so much time, you know, where there, there were amazing sets and big, you know, sweeping camera shots and whatever, which a lot of the time we were just sitting around for, trying to 
alleviate the bother at times uh, and really sent you to some funny places <laughs> in mind. So uh, a lot of the most memorable times were just pissing around uh, with each other, trying to make each other laugh. And boy, did we laugh. <laughs> Go up top if there are any questions from up top, like right dead center with the black hair folks. Thanks for being here. Um, what was the first episode you've seen of Doctor Who? Where are you? <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> You're so high up. Don't fall. <laughs> the first episode, so it wasn't on when I was a kid, uh, but it, well, it was when I was really young. So I remember sitting at my, my nan's house, the same nan. Um, while she was gazing at me, saying, "It's so beautiful." Um, when I was a kid, uh, in front of the fire, I remember watching some Sylvester McCoy episodes. Um, so it was one of those, I think, and I can't be more specific than that. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh boy, there's a fez in the middle of that trio over there. Yeah. Only the stuff I stole. <laughs> Which begs the question. Best of the steal. Yeah. Yeah. I've got two bits of the TARDIS. <laughs> I've got like a phone, and there's a magnifying glass which was used quite a bit. It was just on the TARDIS, like a proper magnifying glass. I just ended the earth and in that straight away. <laughs> um, and then, I'm not sure what I've got. When our leaving presents, they gave me and Karen. Giant pictures of ourselves. <laughs> Thanks. So, so that, yeah, that's above my bed. Um, that's not, that's not, no, that's not. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I've got like whole piles of stuff. Having an action figure of myself was a pretty big moment. That was a pretty big day. Uh, it looks nothing like me, but it's nice to have. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of cool. And you know, I kept all the scripts and everything. I, you know, when I get really broke, I, <laughs> I have my slump in my forties. I think my thirties going to go well. Then I'm going to spend all my money and become bankrupt and just sell my Doctor Who memorabilia. I imagine that moment of, of getting your action.